Welcome to day two of the Holy Ghost Conference themed, The Passing and the Work of the Holy Spirit. Today's message is titled, The Work of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament by Elder Raphael Mayaden. Get ready for another powerful encounter. Let's dive in. God bless you. We can do it for Jesus, a better one for Jesus. of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. And without you, we are having no conference. Yes. And that is why we pray that this evening you will show up. Amen. And cause your presence to be felt like never before. In the mighty name of Jesus, and amen. let all believers shout, Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. We give all the glory to God for this evening. For bringing us together once again in His holy presence. Yesterday, as we have been told, our pastor began the conference with us, speaking to us about the person of the Holy Spirit. 
And yesterday he established that the Holy Spirit is not just a mere influence. The Holy Spirit is not a thing. But he is infinitely wise. And unapologetically divine. Oh, hallelujah. He is indeed God. And he shares all the attributes with the Father and the Son. He established that he reveals his personality in his emotions his feelings his wisdom and his will and he made us understand that it is not we who want more of him but rather the Holy Spirit wants more of us. And if we are yielded fully unto him, then this week he will fail us. Oh, your amen is sick. Amen. He wants to have all of us. And this evening, I want us to look at the work of the Holy Spirit in the believer. And I have christened it the beginning, the ending, and the in-between. And Hallelujah. Amen. The beginning, the ending, and the in-between. The work of the Holy Spirit. And we pray that God will give us grace and enlighten the eyes of our understanding. I want to look at what I mean by the beginning. IT kindly give me 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 3. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Kasa kasa no infri yesu ebusiande ye na obiara intumi infre yesu ewrade ji se unkonkrono amen hallelujah amen the work of the holy spirit in the believer unkonkrono juma oye wo jidi ni abrabomu what do we mean by the beginning what do we mean by the beginning when we refer to the workings of the Holy Spirit? The book of Ephesians tells us that we have been saved by grace through faith and not through our works that any man should boast. It is this grace through faith which has brought us salvation. And Romans chapter 10 verse 10 tells us that with the heart we believe unto righteousness and with the mouth Confession is made unto salvation. And so as we confess, we enter into the gateway of salvation. But one might think that confessing or proclaiming Jesus as Lord is a simple or a mere thing. But when we read the book of James chapter 2 verse 19, the Bible tells us that even demons, they know of the power of Jesus Christ. 
and by that knowledge of of, of the power of Jesus they have, they tremble. They shudder. In fact, in the ministry of Jesus Christ on earth, we see several accounts where in the presence of Jesus, demons begin to to, 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 to shout that Jesus, Son of God, why have you come to destroy us before our time? They know of his power. They know of his ability. But admitting him as Lord is something they can never do. They know of God's power more than even you and I. But they cannot accept his lordship. And in fact, it is not only among demons. Even among some human beings. Sometimes you wonder why we preach a lot. We try to convince people about the salvation through Jesus. And yet it is difficult for people to accept. Paul is telling us in the book of 1 Corinthians. That to be able to call Jesus as Lord, it takes the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. It takes the Holy Spirit. And so when Jesus told Nicodemus that unless a man is born of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit is involved in the work of regeneration. And so our ability to accept Jesus as our Lord is the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. So sometimes when people get angry, Something happens in church. Maybe see what sorry. And they go like, Me and I'm a I'm from our sorry. Now I yet say, oh, I came by myself. Please take your church. You are making a big mistake. And I say, oh, no, we am from so You did not come by yourself. And you want, oh, by, eh. The Bible says that if he does not call you, the Bible says one flower, you cannot come. One to me, ma. For it is the Holy Spirit now, who convicts the world of sin, of righteousness. And of judgment. And so it is the work of the Holy Spirit in us. That gives us the ability to accept Jesus as our Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And so if you are seated here this evening. Or if you are watching me on social media. And you have Jesus as your Lord. That is the beginning of the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. It is by his grace. That he has given us this ability to accept him as our Lord. And it is not just the mere confession of our lips. But rather our total submission to him as Lord of all. So if someone says that he is truly born again, then that person accepts the totality of the lordship of Jesus Christ over his or her life. This evening I pray. If there are still any aspects of our lives which have not been yielded 
to the Lordship of Jesus. Or as the Holy Spirit works in us. May we surrender all. Oh, may we surrender all. That he will become Lord of all. He will become Lord over my finances. He will become Lord over my marriage. He will become my Lord in my privacy. And he will become my Lord even in my public life. It is the work of the Holy Spirit in us that is able to help us to declare Jesus as our Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Spirit at work in the believer. Now, what do we mean when we talk of the ending? So we have seen the beginning. Mm -hmm. Now we want to look at the end. And then we will come to the in-between. The workings of the Holy Spirit. I.T. kindly give me 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 22. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 22. Okay, maybe let's take it from 21. Okay, let's take it from 21. Okay, from 21. Okay, from 21. Okay, from 21. Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Now, Ono nsu na waso yen ano na wama yen unkonkrono di aye jaha ama yen wa yen akumemu. Amen. Amen. Yesterday we read from Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. Ose nra ye ken kain fi efiso humanimu. When pastor told us that the Bible said we should not grieve the Holy Spirit. Ose oso fune chire yen se yen se si yema unkonkrono yure ho. Who has been given to us as a seal for the day of redemption. Now, other versions refer to the seal as a deposit. As a guarantee. As a down payment. For those who work in the bank. Or those who have ever assessed any facility from the bank before. When they say that a guarantee. It is something you, you give. To make an assurance that whatever agreement you are entering in with a person, you are going to fulfill your part of the bargain. Now, the Bible is saying that the Holy Spirit has been given to us. As a down payment. Guaranteeing our salvation. Guaranteeing our redemption. And so once he is in us. We are 100% assured. That the promise of salvation of God. Will surely come to pass. Oh hallelujah. Amen. Romans chapter 8 verse 9. Says that he who does not have the spirit of God is none of his. Now what do we mean when we say that the Holy Spirit has been given to us as a seal, as a guarantee, as a deposit. Now, let's read something from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Reading from verse 7 and 8. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 7 and 8. It says that for the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. But the one who now holds it back 
will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. Verse 8. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. Now, I want to say that 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Paul is talking about someone he refers to as the lawless one. And he says that this lawless one has not been totally revealed. But even though he has not been totally revealed, we see some aspects of his workings. But he calls somebody the restrainer. The one who prevents the lawless one from fully operating. And he says that it is this restrainer who is preventing the lawless one from running amok. But when you continue, it says that a day is coming. When this restrainer will be taken away. And this restrainer is the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. We know that in the olden days, the Holy Spirit was not resident on earth. He would come and operate through some human beings and then go back. But on the day of Pentecost, when the church was being commissioned, the Holy Spirit came to be resident on earth. And it is this Holy Spirit who lives in you and lives in me. He is the one Paul is referring to as the restrainer. And Paul is saying that in this church dispensation, as long as the Holy Spirit remains on earth, he is an influence that is preventing Satan from Taking over completely. But watch, watch this. It says that a day is coming. And that day, this restrainer will be taken away. The restrainer will be taken from the earth. So when the Bible says that, the Holy Spirit has been given to us as a deposit for the day of redemption. It is referring to that day when the Holy Spirit will be taken away from the earth. And because his seal is in us, when the Holy Spirit is leaving the earth, he will capture us with him. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. That is what theologians refer to as the rapture. Amen. That is what theologians refer to as the rapture. So, so long as the Holy Spirit lives in me, and the Holy Spirit lives in you, we are guaranteed that on the day when he is taken away, oh, I will be caught up with him. And that is what Paul says, that we shall all not sleep. 
But on that day, when the trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ, they will rise first. And those of us who are alive, in the twinkle of an eye, we shall be transformed. Oh, we shall be transformed. And we will be caught up. And we will meet the Lord in heaven. The Holy Spirit has been given to you and I as a seal, as a deposit, as a guarantee for the day of redemption. And so, so long as he is in me, and so long as he is in you, oh, you are assured of salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. And when the Holy Spirit is taken away, that will be the end of the church age. That will be the end of the dispensation of grace. And it is after the church has been ruptured that now the lawless one will be revealed. And he will now come and dominate the earth. And so if the Holy Spirit is not in you, a day is coming when grace will end because there will be no Holy Spirit on the earth. So even if today, today that we say the Holy Spirit is a restraining force, just look around us and see the lawlessness, see the wickedness, and just imagine that day when the Holy Spirit will be taken away, you don't want to be part of that experience. And my prayer is that that deposit of the Holy Spirit in you and I, oh, we will not grieve him. We will not grieve him so that when he is taken out of the earth, I will be caught up. You will also be caught up. And we will escape the unveiling of the lawless one. Oh, may God give us grace. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let me talk about the in between. And and then then so we have spoken about the beginning of the workings of the Holy Spirit in the believer. And we have looked at the end game. What he will do for us in the end. But now in between. In between our regeneration. And our being caught up in heaven. What is the Holy Spirit doing? Beloved, we are in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. And this is what Jesus said when he said in John chapter 14 verse 16 and 17. That I will not leave you as orphans. But I will ask of the Father. And he will send you another comforter. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. That comforter has come to dwell with us. And until we are caught up to heaven. Oh, he is the one. Who is guiding us and helping us in our Christian I know that the other speakers will be talking about the works of the Holy Spirit. But this evening, I just want to look at two broad thematic areas of the workings of the Holy Spirit as we await our rapture. I call these experiences the well experience and the river experience. Experience. No, no, no. Hallelujah. Amen. The well experience and the river experience. experience, 
in so experience. Now, the well experience is when Jesus met with the Samaritan woman. In John chapter 4, verse 14. He says that, I have a certain water that I can give. And whoever drinks that water, this water will be a well within him. Springing unto eternal life. The well experience is what I refer to as the private, personal, internal workings of the Holy Spirit in a believer. When you have a well, chances are that you will keep it under lock and key. You will be the only one who will draw from it or only your close associates. So Jesus told the Samaritan woman that I can give you a certain water. When you drink of that water inside of you it will be a well. And this well will be working towards eternal life. It is not for public soul. You don't share it with other people. It is individualized. It is internal. The Holy Spirit is working inside of you. It is a personal experience. And my prayer is that this week as we conference with the Holy Spirit oh, may he dig his well in us. That well which will well unto eternal life. The spring of life a personal fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And how does this work in us? Number one, for the sake of time, we will not read. The Holy Spirit working inside of us as individuals gives us a better personal revelation of Jesus. The Holy Spirit will reveal Christ to you. There are several dimensions of Jesus. And it is the Holy Spirit that helps us to understand the man we are following. He reveals Christ to us. You can read Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. This is a personal experience. It is not for public consumption. It is for you, the individual. The Holy Spirit working in you. Number two is that the Holy Spirit gives us Continuous sanctification. We have not been made perfect yet. So Paul was saying that my beloved children whom I travail for until Christ be formed in you. So so Christ is being formed in us. God is working on us. So that more and more we will look like his son. And the workings of the Holy Spirit. In the Christian. Is that he continues to perfect us. And so when I become a Christian today. Because of the Holy Spirit's work in me, in a year's time, 
I should not remain the same way I came. The Holy Spirit should have refined my character. The Holy Spirit will pass me through his refinery. So that he will burn off every chaff. Every impurity and every waste that is within me. This is a personal working of the Holy Spirit. Second Corinthians, sorry, Second Thessalonians chapter two verse thirteen. Number three is that the Holy Spirit helps us to put to death. Our members which are on earth. We are in a battle with the flesh. Our flesh is at war with us. And it is the Holy Spirit. That helps us. To put to death. The elements in us that fight against the spirit. And so the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 13 that if we are able to put to death the flesh by the spirit then we shall live. My prayer this evening is that any part of us which is at war with our, our salvation. Which is contending with us. May the Holy Spirit give us grace. That we'll be able to put them to death. So that we'll be able to run the race. The Holy Spirit produces godly fruits in us. What we call the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against, against these things, the Bible says there is no law. It is the spirit at work in me that will help me to love that will help me to develop patience that will help me to be a gentleman that will help me to be a faithful person that will help me to show kindness this is how the Holy Spirit works in us and finally he teaches us and reveals truth unto us. And so 1 John chapter 2 verse 20. And 27. He says that, beloved, you have received an anointing from the Holy One. And this anointing abides in you. And this anointing teaches you all things. And as long as he teaches you, you remain in him. It is the Holy Spirit that will teach us how to understand our Christian work. So if you need any teacher, Go to the Holy Spirit. When you read your Bible and you don't understand, oh, call on the Holy Spirit. He is the one who held in the writing of the Bible. And so if you want to understand the Bible, he is the one who will reveal the truth unto you. Beloved, this is what I call the well experience. This is an internal working of the Holy Spirit. So you don't share it with people. It is a personal experience you must have. That the Holy Spirit will reveal Christ to you, you as an individual. 
is, it is not a corporate anointing. You need to understand your Christianity and your calling by your own self. And the, and the Holy Spirit is here to help you do now, that. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Now, the final one is what I call the well experience. The river experience. The river experience. In John chapter 7, we'll be praying soon. In John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39. In John chapter 7, the Bible says that Bible on the final day of the feast Jesus lifted his voice with a, a, a loud shout and said come unto me whoever is thirsty and come and drink and whoever believes in me out of his belly or out of his belly shall gush out rivers of water oh hallelujah amen after the Holy Spirit has worked on you internally, now he begins to flow out. This one is a public experience. It is when you become an outlet. By which the Holy Spirit can touch other people. And so when we read the book of Acts, we see the workings of the Holy Spirit. We see miracles. We see healing. We see deliverances. We see the prophetic at work. We see mighty works. So somebody has said that. The acts of the apostles should rather be called the acts of the Holy Spirit. Because it was the Holy Spirit in the apostles who was dispensing his grace. They had become conduits through which this river was flowing. To affect their well. Beloved, beyond the well experience, there is also the river experience. Where the Holy Spirit can use you to touch other people. Where you become a healer. Where you become a miracle worker. Where you become a person who will turn your world upside down. This is how the Holy Spirit is working in us. And as we avail ourselves to him, he will give us both the internal experience where he will work on us to become better persons. And after that, we will become channels of blessing where we will become the streams like in the book of Ezekiel chapter 47 when it says that there was this river which was flowing and wherever that water goes anything which was dead came back to life when that water enters the sea there is a bumper harvest and along the borders of the water trees grow they bear their fruit in and out of season church sorry this is what the Holy Spirit wants to do through us. We, any, any, uh, and we as we move. yield our members to him, now, he would dig his well in us and also flow out through us and use us to influence our world. May God be with us.
And as we cry out to him, may the heavens be open. And yes, and may he pour out his water on us. That will be a channel of blessing. Rise to your feet as we pray. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. I bring Ponsio Rigu Yasu Onya Miria Adinina Fofro. I bring Ponsio Rigu Yasu Onya Miria Adinina. Thank you for joining us for day two of the Holy Ghost Conference. We hope Elder Raphael Maeden's message blessed you. Stay tuned for more as we continue tomorrow. God bless you.